Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Unity 3D LAN tutorial. So just like I said a while ago we're going to keep bouncing back to our AI. So we're going to add something new today, we're going to tell them what to do when you actually hit them. So at the moment they've got no way to lose life. They can live forever, we can shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and it doesn't work. It won't work. But what I'm just going to do to test this is because of course we have glitches with our characters firing and everything because it's annoying. I'm just going to put this out here just so it can hopefully fire and then we'll go up and just shoot one of them and you'll see it won't do anything Falcon! Punch! You can see we'll hit them and they'll probably just bounce Falcon! 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 Punch! It does nothing, they just carry on walking like nothing hits them so we need to change that so the first thing we need to do is give them health inside of the entity starts so I'm going to go to MISC starts and open up entity starts and you will see I've changed it a tiny bit by simply adding the rest of them. That's all I've done, just adding the rest. So it's really simple, we've done it many many times. So we need to add um, a health but then we also need to add a maximum health. So the health is the one which will be took down and the maximum health is the one which when we reset the game it equals the max health so they can, we might be able to make them take potions as a battle thing tactic. So let's hope. So stats will say down here, var max health int. And we'll also duplicate it and put health. So that'd work, but then it'd show max health in the inspector, and we really don't want it to. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. So what you do to hide it in the inspector without changing the property of it, is you simply put the at symbol, so um, at gmail.com kind of thing, at symbol, and then with capital H, Hide, capital I, in, capital I again, Inspector. And that'll just hide it in the Inspector. I don't really use that often unless it's really needed, like this one, because you don't need to edit the max health in the Inspector, but yeah. So, okay. You can also put it on the health if you like, but one of them, I'm going to switch it to the health then, because then you can, in fact, no, I'll keep it where it is, because then you can see the damage as you do it. So it'll only do the line below it, there's currently no way to do multiple lines, which is kind of annoying. So if you want to hide multiple variables, it's one for each line, but yeah. So you'll see that won't win the inspector now, but I'll quickly add those to end of here. So we'll say, um, comma, mhp, int, and hp, int. Perfect. So we'll come down here, and we'll say, max health equals mhp and health equals hp so of course we've got to add it all the way up at the top so so for our character we'll just put comma and then we'll say 100 100 easy enough and then for this one we'll say 100 well we'll say 50 50 our character's always got to be stronger but it happens in most games just like that so they've all got 50 health and we'll just say it takes 10 off every time we hit them. You could even say it gets 4 if you like, it's up to you. But yeah. So, that'll tick. Tick, 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 tick. And you can see, nothing. It's all fine. So, what we're going to do is refresh the button here, and everything gets refreshed. It doesn't show max health in it like we wanted it to. Perfect. I mean, we didn't want it to, so that works. So, what we're now going to do is go to our um, civilian land enemy AI and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and type function on trigger enter and yes I know function spelled wrong fixed and we'll say call collider which is our parameters to determine what hit it so up here what we're going to type is if call.gameobject.name equals fireball clone so if it hits them by the fireball, we're going to simply test by saying print I got hit. Because then we can test if we've actually got it all working. Because if nothing's hitting them, then we're wasting time. So hopefully it should work. But one thing I am going to do is, before we do it, is remove that falcon punch sound. Because I hate that sound now. I've listened to it so many times. So where is it? Falcon punch. I'm going to set it to none. Because I hate that sound. I have to get a new one. So we fire it, perfect. So we should hit any of them and you should just print I got hit. I, oh come on, I can't even get in. The 
this is useless. So I just hit him and he didn't do anything, so that means one of them is not a trigger. So I'm going to go to our fireball and change it to a trigger. We really should make a mind up about that one. So, fireball there, and it's got a mana behavior, we can just draw that. That was probably our collisions in the first place, but yeah. So it's now a trigger, so we can go up and hopefully shoot him, and it should print I got hit. Otherwise we have to figure out another way around it. So we go up, fire. I got hit, perfect. So we've just hit him twice, and it didn't destroy it, but yeah. So we go back, so first thing we have to do when they get hit is destroy the fireball. Destroy. And this is where a couple of people have thrown up errors, I just thought I'd stick it in here. If you just put game object, that'll destroy whatever this script's attached to. This script's attached to the character, so if you shoot this, the character will be destroyed, it'll just kill him. But if you put call dot game object, it'll destroy whatever is hitting the character or whatever's on this script, so the bullet in our case. So that'll destroy the bullet. And the next thing we want to do is, of course, we're going to spook them. They're like, hey, someone's just hit me. So I'm thinking if someone stares at you, you get a little bit more spooked than normal. So we'll say 60. So you hit them and it's instantly, hey, what are you doing? So that should work. And we also need to take their life down. So we're going to paste the exact same thing in, stars.entities.id. But instead of spook meter, we'll say health minus equals and this is where we need to go and find our weapon stats to link it properly so here so damage is f one from the fireball damn we're going to be sad forever so i'm just going to boost all the damage up in fact no i'll take the health down it's easier so i need to link it to weapon stats my recorder there so we're going to go up to the top where it says stats and we're going to say w just w it's easy to type and we'll say here, weapon stats. And stats here, so W stats, miss scripts dot weapon stats. So that should add all that up, easy. So we're going to copy this, and we're going to come down. And if it's a fireball clone, then we already know where it is. We will find a better method to do it in the future, but for now we're not going to. So we're going to say minus equals W stats dot, and this is where we need to go to our weapon stats and have a look. So in here. We need the fireball one, so it's number one. So f weapon starts, weapons, number one. No, two. Yeah, one, that was right, one. So weapon starts, weapons, one, dot, damage. So the damage on the fireball is an integer. It should work fine. Take its damage off, boom. So one thing I'm going to do before we carry on is change their entity starts health, which is the very, very end two. So, character I am keeping at 10. In fact, I'm just going to take off a 0 on every single one. It seems to work. Like so. So now it's 5 instead of 50. So 5 shots instead of 50 shots. Because 50 shots would be a bit long. So, we need to now check if they're dead. So every time we hit them, we'll just say check dead. In fact, check death. I swear down we add all this on when they do the floppy thing and stuff. No mind. So function, check death. So in here, we literally, we're not going to put any of the new ones in yet because I can't find that script, but we will eventually link it back into here. So we'll say if starts.health is less than one, so then obviously it's, if it's zero, then we're going to say destroy game object, which will kill whatever object it is. But what I am going to do, just to save us having to look, is I'm going to grab this start.entities.health and put it into this print statement. So every time we hit them, it prints off what their health is, so we, we can just see easier. So that should hopefully determine what they get hit by and kill them eventually. So we can click play, and then first thing I'm going to do is reset the entity stats so they're not going to 100 health, because that would take forever to kill them. So hopefully now we should be able to go up to them and just hit them and it should knock it down. We really need to fix the fireball bullet but it's a bit beyond me at the moment. So four, three, two, come on, one, and one more. Oh, you're joking, I can't get him. 
Got him. There. So that's perfect. So obviously he's trying to float up for waypoints. So I found our other script and we need to begin sticking it in the land enemy AI because that's where they get it from, pretty much. So this is a short-ish script. If you don't have this... Okay, that's not quite short. But if you don't have this script, then you need to go and follow that tutorial. It's, I'll provide a link on the annotation in this big white area here now. So this should be relatively simple to stick across because we've got enemy hit, which we don't use. And coin object, it's relatively to move, so we need to go and do it. So, right here, if enemy life is less than one, we need to get all this. So we can do that, really simple. That just destroys the object if the character's out of the position. So let's go and do it. So we'll copy that, and we'll stick it in land enemy AI. So it needs to be in function update here. So if we scroll down to here, and we'll just get a bit of room, and we'll say... Um, destroy dead character after range oh dear. And we'll paste it in here so what that script does if you didn't follow that tutorial either which I will provide another link right there is when your, when your character is out of range of it instead of it laying dead on the floor it disappears it just goes so hopefully that will work so we can come back and I'm going to actually delete that function now to save time so we need the function starting, and what this one does is assigns all the body parts to the um, component variable here. So we can copy that, land them in AI, and take it all the way up the top and paste it here. If this is like, if you're wondering why I'm not doing all this again, because it seems a bit pointless teaching it twice. But yeah, so here we'll type um, death stuff. Yeah, that'll work. So we don't need these bits here, so we can do that, so it assigns them all like so. So that one works. Up here we can get rid of all that now. Coin object um, is for when they die. Enemy life we don't need, but we'll, we'll need to assign them eventually. On collision stay, that's why this one wasn't working when we attacked them, because we changed it to a trigger. So hit is this one here. And it called. So what we're going to do is right here where it says enemy life less than one, this is where they die completely. So we're going to grab all these bits here and we're going to copy it to this one. There. So I'm going to cut that so everything inside enemy life in hit and we're going to stick it right where we killed them. So check death. Instead of destroy Carl, we paste it all in there. And that'll even make what this one does, where it'll randomly spawn some coins for us, because we need coins, that was always awesome when we did that. And it'll even make them play Death Animation 1, which I think is they fall backwards, which is like slow motion weirdness. Death Animation 2, which is they fall forwards, or they turn into a, a oh damn, what's it called? Ragdoll, that's it. So they just flop around and die. So if you haven't seen that, there's another link right there for Ragdoll. And before any of you wonder why have I put so many links in, I'm noting them down as I do it so we can get them. So we go back to our land enemy collisions and we haven't got much left. So obviously we need to turn the collider to false, so to stop the animation from crashing, which is we put them, they get hit. That's to do with the sword. Ignore that one, we don't need to do that. If, but we can copy all this in. That will help. So we'll come down to on trigger, enter here, and paste the sword in. So we can actually beat them after death with a sword. Yes. But anyway, I'm going to copy all this in here. And just paste this bit here. So the sword is number zero. Spook me to zero. Yep, yeah, yeah. So that should all work. I'll take out the print statement because we don't need it. But I'll just put it at the bottom here. So that should work for the sword and the Hadouken, well, fireball. And on our, all we've got left is we've got all these, we've done all that bit. And this is the only one left. We've got to make sure we've got everything. So I apologise again if you don't like this bit, but it has to be done. So I'm going to copy these ones up here and I'll stick it all the way up here. So game objects. What these are is the coin object is the coins for you to collect and the fire particles is when you hit them with fire. So I'm not going to stick the energy one on because uh, I'm just not going to. So what I am going to do is make it spawn the fire though because that was always amazing when that happened. 
So we're going to grab that, and when we hit them on trigger enter, so I'm just going to hide the function update and fire. So on trigger enter, it spawns the fire. Easy enough. So that should be it. So we're going to delete this entire script because we don't need it. So no. We'll go back and you will see we get a couple of errors which we need to do. So it's already got a definition for timer, so we need to fix that. So when I land enemy AI at the top, where's our timer? So let's just quickly fix that. So we're going to, at the end of here, we'll just put bracket and where's our timer, 5000. So every time it says timer for that one, we need to change it to timer bracket 2. So it is best just going timer. So timer 0, timer, timer. In fact, we just want timer dot. That's what we're looking for. OK, then. There we go. Timer. So timer bracket 2. And timer bracket 2, timer bracket 2. Find next. So the reason I've searched for timer space is because on all the others, we have timer bracket. And I know on mine, I always put the brackets without a space. It works well. So we can come back up and we can remove that timer, what we did. The body part should automatically add, a, add, and all we have to do is add the fire particles and the coin object. One thing I am going to do is implement our at sign on this body parts because we don't need it because it's a large array. So at hide in inspector. And what that does is, if you don't know, I don't think I've actually taught that before, is it will hide it in the inspector, but only the one line underneath. It will still work as a normal variable, whatever it is, static, public, whatever, but it just won't show it in the inspector. So it works really, really well. Try it. Yeah, we did do it. We did it for health this morning. Dope. But yeah, well, not this morning, earlier. So we assign the objects, and it should work, hopefully. So enemy life, it doesn't know. So 116, we've got to go and change that again, which, if I remember, is... Not in function. Well, actually, it is in function update, but there's one there. We need to find the one where it takes the health down, so this one. So every time it says enemy life, replace enemy life with status.entities.id.health. Boom. Oh, we only had one then. So let's try it. So this is a 20 minute tutorial nearly, but it's a well worth 20 minute tutorial. Come on, out. all you know it's epic. So we can hide that, and we need coin for our land mail. So coin. Drag it on to coin object. So we can hide both of those. And the last one we need is our fire particles, which is right here. So we stick that on. So that should work pretty well. So every time we hit them with fire, they'll burst into flames, and then they should hopefully be cool. I hope this works. I really do. Oh, God. So, so we have a lot of errors here, and a lot of them are to do with basic things. So I'll do it on one of them. I'll pause the video, do it on the rest, and come back. So as you can see, civilian one female here. One of the errors is um, it can't. It must be non-comedic, which is here. It is, so it's fine. This one here again is saying foot line 41. It can't find it. We'll worry about that one later. But these are the ones we're trying to find. There is no collider attached to it, so we need to attach a collider to the civilian. So what we're going to do is drag our box collider and stick it on. Okay, apparently we're not. We're going to hide that, and we're going to go back, and we're going to stick a box collider on. It doesn't matter what type of collider it is, box colliders usually work quite well. So as you can see, like that, we need to stretch it all the way up. Well, okay, position it halfway, then stretch it. And what that'll do is actually give them the ability to not be shot. Perfect. So that's what we need, and the other one we need is an animation component. So we'll stick animation on. And right here, it needs to be three animations big. Do not play automatically. And what we're going to do is we need death one. Actually, okay, two. We need death one and death two. Boom and boom. So if we go back to entity and remove the animation component and the animator component, that should work. If not, we'll have to stick it back on entity. Hide enemy collisions, and I'll do it for the rest. So after a long and hard process figuring out why that went wrong, um, basically it's kind of simple set well when we set velocity to push our character forward um, this one here is it that one that one there velocity when we change it it doesn't work if the character's kinetic and when it does this one get components in children it does it for every single thing even the one what's on it and this one here needs to be off on both so a simple fix for that 
is to grab these this here and paste it below and grab this one here and paste it below as well and then all we do is set it both to false so that should fix that one so what you've got to make sure you've got on your characters is a rigid body with two off things two gravity and kinetic off land enemy AI script everything set up on if it on it we need to set the coin object to so coin leave it that one yep so make sure you set that up on it and you also need fire particles which I can't remember where they are there you also need your particles on to get a fully functional one you need a box collider which isn't a trigger so that's for your main one and that'll just let, let them stand up and everything and then you need your animation but the issue is with the animation is it pushes it all the way over there so what we're going to do is grab that and remove it in fact move it okay remove it then and we'll stick it, the animation back on entity and the reason we're doing this is because then when we scroll up the top and insert the animations here it'll link directly to it when we created it so it's got a parent and it'll be inside so it'll play the animation here instead of bouncing back to where we created it so I've, I've hit all the rest so we've only got one so when you click play hopefully that should work so you play and you'll see we might get a couple errors so she stares at us so let's go and shoot her and she walks perfect so let's shoot her so she lights on fire and boom we get an error so obviously she's floating now and we need to figure out why but we can cut the coins and everything so we need to stop her from floating anywhere so I'm, my guess will be she needs gravity which doesn't seem to be working kinetic there we go so they both need to be true and we need to set the force to zero so we've got quite a few glitches there but it's getting very long tutorial now so um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to carry on with this next tutorial we're not going to skip a tutorial we're going to finish this off and make sure it works fully so if you find any more glitches with it feel free to fix them or comment below um, I'll try and fix as many as I can um, with fighting yourself apparently and um, don't forget if you watch my lost map series I have fixed this entity so they've got a better neck better shoulders and stuff like that I hope you I hope you like this tutorial thank you for watching thank you for sticking by if you stuck all the way to the end please hit the thumbs up button or the dislike button but please comment below why you don't like it and i'll see you next time